well hello friends hello viewers you're welcome to another episode of loving yourself and this is episode 24 wow god has been so faithful we've been on this journey for 24 good weeks and god has been faithful I want to thank everyone who has been joining us all those who have been commenting liking our posts sharing our posts supporting us in prayers we want to say a big thank you to you god bless you and all those who are going to watch today we want to let you know that god has something to say god has something special something for you today it's loving yourself loving yourself loving yourself loving yourself it is a foundational error for you to love your neighbor and hate yourself. That's our favorite quote in loving yourself. Loving yourself, you must know that, number one, you must first love God, you love yourself, and you love your neighbor. So whatsoever you do, make sure you put God first. Then you treat yourself good, then treat your neighbor. Because you can't give out what you don't have. So that's why we say in loving yourself every Monday that it is a foundational error for you to love your neighbor and hate yourself. My name is Reverend Mrs. Nkajima Obayinami Paul Obele, and I'm so privileged to be your host in loving yourself. God has been wonderful. Today we have something special, something God has for us today. And we just go straight to the point we've been on loving your neighbor and um today we have something great and our topic is loving your neighbor with money we've talked about loving your neighbor with your time we've talked about loving your neighbor by caring today we want to look at loving your neighbor with ego ego like look away your money a p in my dialect called a p money 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 how can you love your neighbor with your money so before we start wherever you're in the sound of my voice please like this video comment on this video share this video with your friends someone you know that just needs to hear something as i say god is teaching us as i'm speaking to you i'm also speaking to myself so share this video share this video and god bless you so by your heads down let's commit to this program into the hands of god Father, we give you praise because you're faithful. We thank you because there is no like you. You've been a good, good father. So, Lord, we want to say, oh, God, that you open the eyes of our understanding today to deeper truths in your words. Speak to us, Lord. Thank you for loving yourself that has been in existence for 24 good weeks. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the wealth. Oh, the wealth of wisdom you've given to us all through this episode. We say, blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. We return all the glory to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, oh, God, today that whosoever is going to watch this video whosoever is going through tough times or going through one issue or the other father we pray that you will minister to them oh god those who have been broken we pray oh god that you are the mender of the broken heart you mend such hearts in the mighty name of jesus father lord we pray oh god that sinners will be saved they will come oh god to the knowledge of salvation in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord for everything you've done in our lives in jesus name amen amen and amen welcome back to loving yourself hallelujah before we go further we want to use this medium and on behalf of loving yourself we want to wish and celebrate our fathers we want to wish them a happy father's week or father's convention happy father's day and how you put it all the fathers in the house thank you for all the work you've been doing and for all those who have been responsible and those who will be responsible as long as you're a father thank you thank you for being there thank you for all the responsibilities thank you for being there so loving yourself we want to use this medium to wish you a happy father's day celebration and we want you to know that whatsoever you do the bible say a good man is a man that liveth an inheritance for his children's children so don't forget don't just be an instructor be a father that will leave an inheritance for their children spend time with your kids spend time with your loved ones and god bless you once more happy father's day god bless you we love you and we celebrate you back to loving yourself loving yourself loving yourself loving yourself so loving yourself was taken from matthew 22 verse 37 to 40 and it says jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart all thy soul and with all thy mind and thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself upon this two less all 
hang all the law and the prophet. So that's why we always say it is a foundational error for you to love your neighbor and hate yourself. You must first of all love excuse me love god love yourself and love your neighbor so who is your neighbor we say your neighbor is someone who dress near someone who is around you loving your neighbor means showing care showing love showing help showing consign and sacrifice to someone around you there is always someone you will meet in this life journey that needs your help there's always someone you will encounter that needs what you have i always tell people when you're living on earth don't just as if you're alone whatsoever you have whatsoever you acquire maybe you have money maybe you have wealth you have wishes you have cars you have houses a day we come as we know there are so many who have died if you go to the when they're in the funeral you see them they bury them on the grave they don't go with their houses they don't go with their priceless possessions they don't go with their money they don't put their gold their silver and everything into into that grave they just put them like that naked you came naked you go so i always tell people don't live in isolation don't do as if you're the only one there is always someone in this life that needs you that needs what you have so what's really Wherever you find yourself try to reach out and as i said in our previous episode loving your neighbor everything is not all about money i gave us 15 ways that we can love our neighbor just a smile smile jesus loves you brother smile jesus loves you hallelujah just smile when you see someone that, this year people are going through a lot in this world so that your smile can just give someone like a really a, a a relief like it is well and i always when i taught us about smile in our previous episode i said smile has a way of giving you a good fragrance it has a way of turning up the environment when you step into an atmosphere with your good smile it, it, it shows your positive it has a way of making you look good it has a way of making you look attractive so don't just burn your face like stockfish so there are many ways caring you walking on the road you see a pregnant woman with so many loads baby on the back loads on the head just say hello can i help you let us say no it's okay but at least render that we spoke about time the other day giving time spending time with family with loved ones so there are many ways you can show your neighbor that you love them so today we are talking about money Today we're talking about money, how we can love our neighbor with this thing called money. Before I continue, I, was, I like giving us the 15 ways so that I said every day you wake up, when you walk, wake up um, to a new brand day, a, new, a brand new day rather, you come and I say, okay, where am I going to send, show my love to? So there are 15 ways you can do that. Number one, smile. Number two, compassion, time, genuine consign, care, money. We're talking about money today. Clothings, right attitude companionship communication listening ear there are people that just need you to listen to what they have to say and sometimes what they are saying will not even make sense but just to listen to them shows them that they are loved without criticizing them physical touch a pat on the shoulder it is well it is well with you service willing assistance prayers gifts etc so these are 15 ways i just did it there may be other ways that you can daily show your neighbor you've got to show little kindness just show little kindness does what shine your lights for everyone to see that song where they say show little kindness that little you have that this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine do not hide it under the blanket or under the bushel just let it shine let that your own little shine don't say what do i even have to offer in this world now people are doing a lot of things and we have the preachers we have uh, the ministers, you begin to call the BB people, we have the politicians, they have money. No, there is something you have. When God created you, he didn't create you empty. You were not created empty. That little that you have, that little light of yours, let it shine. Praise the Lord. So today we are going to be talking about loving your neighbor with money. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. So how can we love our neighbor with money? With money, money, today is money. So loving your neighbor with money is a principle rooted in the idea of compassion and generosity. It involves using your financial or financial resources to support and uplift those in need. This concept emphasizes the importance of recognizing the needs of others 
and taking action to provide financial assistance and care all through our loving your neighbor i always say there is something about recognizing what your neighbor needs that's the second step taking action when you know someone needs something you go the extra mind now we're talking about money what is money I just want to, I told you this, I love it yourself. I actually used to go for, to research to make sure I gather it both spiritually and uh, intellectually to make sure it's a balanced diet for everybody. So I said, as I'm teaching us, I'm also teaching myself. So what is money? We all know what money is. Money is widely accepted as a medium of exchange that is used to buy goods and services. It is a tool that people use to trade and obtain the things they need or want. Money can take various forms such as coins, paper, bills, or digital currency. It serves as a way to assign value to goods and services, making it easier for people to trade with one another i'm talking about money money also acts as a store of value that means before someone can give you money that means you have created value or do you understand meaning it can be saved and used later overall money is a fundamental component of modern economies facilitating facilitating transaction and enabling economic activity all these things you heard is just about money money is what a medium of exchange for goods and services so now what will make me to give you my money if you can bring your money and give to somebody that means you love that person because it's like your sweat imagine you some people work for six hours eight hours four hours 12 hours as much to make this thing become money so for someone to now love you and give you that their money no matter how it is it is their sweat it should be valued that means you're valuable praise the lord but we know that this word money has been abused i will still come back to that let me just follow what i have so before for you to love your neighbor with money we have to go to the foundation i said here in my notes i said there are foundational principles for loving your neighbor with money now loving your neighbor with money there are some foundational principles that you must know so that you and you you don't abuse it so that you do it the right way that number one you should know that obedience to god's commands to love others if you're loving your neighbor you want to give out your money why are you doing it what is the brain behind what you're doing we will know that some people use money to lay girls so people use money to say if you take i'll give you money you sleep with me and all those baba shit but we want to look at foundation the main reason when you want to say you love your neighbor what are the foundational principles that that's your love via money should be based on number one i am giving you this money i'm showing you love in obedience to god's command to love one another as we saw in mark 2 say what love the lord your god with all your heart all your soul love your neighbor as you love yourself number two cultivating a compassionate heart that seeks to alleviate the suffering and meet the needs of those around you you have a compassionate heart you just feel compassion number three practicing empathy by understanding and relating to the experiences and struggles of your neighbor you see someone going through a tough time you have to feel it so you render out that your help praise the lord now embracing number four embracing stewardship by responsibly embracing stewardship by responsibly managing your financial resources using them to make a positive mark that word a positive impact in the lives of others now i thought i said something in our previous episode anything you do that does not give glory to god just forget it if you're doing something for a showbiz just forget it so we see that the foundation the Bible said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? We find that in Psalms, 1, in Psalms 11 verse 3. So in everything you do in life, there is a foundation. There is a reason behind what you're doing. Why do you want to love this your neighbor with money? Do you want to just give out money? No. You want to just do a campaign? No. The reason why you're loving this your neighbor number one is because God commands it. Because you have compassion. You have empathy. And you're a steward. You want to serve others. You want to impact into your, your generation. Praise the Lord. Now, the primary foundation for loving your neighbor with money is rooted in both love Loving and obeying the commandments of God. Anything outside this is error. Now I said it is a foundational error for you to love money more than you love God. When you begin to love money and you remove God from it, it is a foundational error. And I repeat it: it is a foundational error to love money and to love money more than you love God. It is a foundational error to love money more than you love God. God is the one that gives you the power to make wealth. He is the one that gives you the power to make wealth. So loving God should be your priority. Loving God should be your number one emphasis. When you've loved him, he will not give you the power to make wealth. You can extend that love to your neighbor. Praise the Lord. Remember the Bible said, thou shalt love your neighbor as you love yourself. But first of all, you must love God. Glory to God. 
We see that in Matthew 22, 37 to 40. I read it earlier when Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all thy heart. On these two commandments hang the law and the promise. In addition to putting God first, other foundational principles for loving your neighbor with money are rooted in compassion, empathy, and stewardship. This is just what I have been saying. So compassion, I want to go detail into it right now. When you say someone has compassion, it starts with having a genuine concern for the well-being of others. You see someone going through a lot, it starts from your heart. You, you, you feel it. You feel it. Well-being of others. You're touched. Recognizing their needs and desiring to alleviate their suffering. Glory to God or their difficulty. It starts from within you. You see someone going through something. Now when we approach when we approach this financial matter with a compassionate mindset, so it's not just about to give your money, when we approach it with a compassionate mindset, we now prioritize using our own resources to make a positive impact in the life of those around us. So it starts from your heart. It starts from you. When you see someone going through a lot, you feel it in your heart. You want to help the person's well-being. Empathy, as I said earlier, means loving your neighbor with money requires putting yourself in their shoe. Now you look at someone, the person is going through a lot, you put yourself in that person's shoe. You understand everything they are going through, their struggles, and you begin to empathize with them, with their circumstances. Now by so doing your cultivating empathy now we begin to look for a way to make sure they are okay you put yourself in their financial um, challenges you see what they are going through you now begin to see how you can motivate them to an extent whereby you provide support for them so you have this mind of empathy always geared towards loving someone and then it's still worship as i said earlier means recognizing that our financial resources are entrusted to us was everything you have in this world as i said was given to you by god it is the lord that gives you the power to make wealth so when you know that what what you have has been entrusted to you by god and you give account one day it is not of your own making so you don't know that the, the, when you know all this you now begin to embrace the responsibility of managing your resources wisely understanding that what you have came from god so we strive to give become good steward now becoming good steward that means i know that what i have everything i have came from god i will not try to use my money in a way that would align with the values of god and will also impact into the life of others this includes loving our neighbor through acts of generosity charity and meeting their practical needs that's still worship generosity charity you're not just doing it because you want to do it there is something inside there is a god factor there that's why i said the first thing the first foundation is god obeying the law of god obeying the commandments of god so these are the things that is gathering this loving your neighbor by money so i'm not just saying love your neighbor by money enter your house and begin to throw dollars begin to do this and just give it for eye service no it comes from within it is this act when you when you when you now have this principle and you do it that's what attracts blessing upon you knowing it knowing why you're doing it and be intentional about it may god give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When this foundational principle are embraced, they form the bedrock for loving your neighbor with money. They guide our financial decisions, encouraging us to use our resources to uplift support and bless those around us also fostering a more caring and compassionate society so this is what all this is all about remember i said um money is not evil but the love of money is the root of all evil many people have i beg i don't know who does not love money me i need money you everybody needs money money is essential for our well-being but when you begin to love it it becomes evil first timothy 6 10 say for the love of money is the root of all evil which which why some converted after they have held from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows now money is not bad or evil whether it is the love of it let me put it this way money in itself is not inherently bad or evil rather it is the love of money that can lead to negative consequences and we not seeing what the love of money has done to even our children and our youth the excessive love of money has led many of our girls astray it has exposed them to the risk of rape to unwanted pregnancies to abortion and even the loss of their life the excessive love of it you can see someone can just tell you come and sleep with me i'll give you 500 now 1000 now sometimes if you see what some guests do with their body you will cry because i don't know i don't know and all these gears towards wanting some of them is just um 
how did they call that thing survivor of the fit fittest and i don't want to talk in, in our previous episode we're talking about self-esteem no self-esteem there's a way you 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 have you you build up your self-esteem that even if you don't have money you know that you can't sell your body come on you're bigger than that you you may not have it but you treat yourself and you know that your body you have you, you have a priceless possession but because of excessive love of money and the things of this world many of our girls because most of them want smartphones they want them um, to look good they want gucci they want hair they want to just you know they want to be all over the place so most of them have lost their their, their pride and their dignity because of this thing called money sometimes even in the church you see them around you and you're like ah god some people they do a lot of mess so this money is really a big thing money plays a crucial role in our daily lives covering various needs such as soap food clothing transportation and more bearing each other's body even through the small assistance we can provide can have a profound and far-reaching impact love loving your neighbor with money is indeed a very crucial and essential practice most of our boys they've resorted into joining court groups they've engaged in risky behavior simply because they want to have a sense of belonging simply because they want to be the good boy so this thing now you cannot say you love someone without bringing out your money love is demonstrated through action even a small amount of 500 or 1000 naira can make a significant difference in saving a girl child or helping a neighbor in need so it may not be too big check that's why i say your neighbor is someone around you sometimes what they need may be very very small i remember one of those days i was just speaking with a girl and i sent her on phone i think she's a member of my church and i was like what's wrong with you it's fair we swear it's okay and I, I just said have you eaten and um, i uh, will eat after this oh yeah i said have you eaten he said no um ma, no my i'm not hungry i'll eat after lunch i just sent I didn't send much to I sent 1000 naira to her. I said, Take that for your lunch. If you see the praise she gave to me, but at first she was doing that. I said, No, it's okay, it's okay. She said, I said, When you finish eating, you call me back. If you see the way she thanked me and thanked me, what did I give? Is it one million, one thousand naira? So, most of imagine now if the girl came and one boy just kind of be doing our uh, one thing, one time. If she's not very strong, she may go for it. So, a lot of our girls have lost them because of this money. So, it may not be big. You may have 500. Some people just transportation, transport fare. And you know everything is increasing it will go a long way so just that little light of yours allow it to shine in your environment before you begin to look around your neighbor is someone that is close to you someone that draws near may god give us sensitivity in the mighty name of jesus amen amen and amen as i said as i'm teaching i'm also teaching myself so want to go to the biblical quotes on loving your neighbor with money there are some instances there are some quotes in the bible there are some um, verses in the bible that talks about this money 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 so i want to read it out so that we can learn together so these are some of the few quotes from the bible on the topic of loving your neighbor with money luke chapter 6 verse 38 say give and it shall be given unto you good measure Press down, checking together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured unto you. This verse highlights the principle of generosity and implies that when you give to others, we will receive abundance in return. Simple, simple, very simple. When you give, it shall be given unto you. In the same measure, good measure, press down. Proverbs 19 17 says, Whoever Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. Don't forget, I said the foundation, one of the foundation of giving, of loving your neighbor with money is you're obeying the commandments of God. Now, Proverbs 19, 17 just dropped it there. He said, whosoever gives, a, excuse me, rather, whosoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord. So this verse is telling us, it's emphasizing that when we show kindness and we help those in need, we are ultimately serving God and we will be blessed by our actions. Praise the Lord. First Timothy 6, verse 17 to 18 say, Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant, not to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides for us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. Someone say willing to share. There are some people that God has blessed with the Lord, but you're not willing to share. It's just for you alone just for you alone it's just like the, the, the drama in church yesterday we were doing father's day there was a drama that the youth acted and it was very 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 touching and very very um we should rely use 
very very good let me put that word good you're talking about a man the man didn't have anything he went to meet uh, one of his he saw his friend his friend now gave him he was complaining i don't have food i don't have this he was very poor and we said he met this friend of his the friend actually okay don't go to my house you meet my wife she'll give you her bag of rice and give you full stop he was so happy when he went he got the rice he took this back back to the house how everybody was happy his wife now said wow we have been praying for god though, and god has answered our prayer let's carry some of this rice and give to our neighbor the husband said no please do you know when we will have the next one so he stayed there with the rice we are even wasting it now after some time the doors were closed again this is friend that he went this is friend was very rich he came to meet him again for money this is friend was calling and telling them to send bags of rice hundred bags to the orphanage that's why he said to him who has more will be given those that don't have even the little they have will be, will, 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 it will be taken from them this is when was giving more giving he the small one that they gave him oh, he did not so when he now came, he explained to his, his friend that ah, where he's working for five months, they've not paid. The friend I say, I'm the one that led you to that job, and that man does not pay, does not owe. Why is your case different? So you see, when you when you're tight-handed, you're blocking doors for you. So he now also gave him money and say, okay, I've given you hundred thousand grand. He was so happy. He remember what his wife told him. He now said, okay, this one I will give to God. I will give this. As he shared the money, gave to God, gave to his neighbors, gave to. The, he was still doing that when they called him to come and take his um the, the um five months salary they owed him that they released it. Things began to open. So what am I trying to say? When we give out like that, we are not tight-handed. God has a way of opening doors for you, and that will be your own testimony in Jesus. Jesus name so God commands us to also and um, first Timothy those who are rich in this world be willing to share this passage instructs those who are financially well off to be generous and willing to share their wealth recognizing that true security and fulfillment comes from God not for material possession true fulfillment comes from God glory to God so all these things all these quotes and the Bible passage that I read above just tells us the importance of using our financial resources to bless others showing kindness generosity and compassion towards our neighbors in need it is very 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 important that we lend out to those in need. Pray neighbor genuinely with money how can you love your neighbor genuinely with money how how can you do that? I want to give you. Loving your neighbor genuinely goes beyond the mere exchange of money. Why? All right. Welcome back. So, loving your neighbor can genuinely go beyond mere exchange of money. Why money can certainly be a useful tool for helping others. True love and care involve more than financial transactions. It's not just giving money like that. It's more. So, I want to tell us some of the ways you can express genuine love for your neighbor incorporating money as a means to support them so i'm just going to go through what i have here and i pray to god that you understand in jesus name so number one number one way of loving your neighbor with money genuinely it provide by providing basic necessity use money to help meet your neighbor's essential needs such as food clothing or shelter consider donating to local charities or organization that focus on providing assistance to those in need so we providing basic necessity in case you don't know how to do this this is another way you can also use your money to show love number two support local businesses use your purchasing power to support local businesses owned by your neighbor by buying from them you contribute to their livelihood and help foster a sense of community maybe someone around you may not really have things that are up to your taste but because you see you want to use that medium to also show the person love you could just get it okay you're so you're so you're selling clothing okay you may not really need them but just to encourage the person so, okay can i have this pair of shoes all right how much does it cost they can take it it was you must use it you can even dash it to someone but when your neighbor is doing something and you are aware of it and the person comes to you don't just ah, this is not my standard you know um, all right I, I when i want to buy something i can go to the big supermarket i can go to the mall i know where to get it no 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 also try to support the um, local businesses it helps a lot so also number three offer financial aid if you know someone in needs you can offer financial assistance directly this could be involve lending money 
providing a temporary financial boost or helping them with necessary expenses also you can help people with your wealth of wisdom help them with necessary expenses okay this had to do it this okay i don't have much there was someone the other day that came and needed a huge sum of money and i know this person very well if you give that money the person will not pay back and it will be like an issue so i was like okay what am i going to do yes you need this huge sum. i know if i give you it's not going to come back i was just talking to myself and i said okay let me give the person the one i know i can give and i will not ask you back so i just got the one i could i said okay take don't pay me back take this and assist yourself and the person was so happy i said the person knew that this amount if he, if i lend it to the person the person will not pay i said remember the one the person is the oh, me, which i just forgot about it so when the person came again like for me to give you these hundreds of thousands i know you will not pay i was saying this in my mind i said okay let me just help let me give you what i can so i told him, just take this amount of money don't pay me use it to assist yourself and the person was so happy so sometimes you look you look beyond what they are saying and just try your best you must not solve the whole problem but that little light of yours can go a long way to help your neighbor praise the lord so that's offer for financial aid number four volunteer your time and your skills why not directly related to money volunteering volunteering can help a significant impact of your neighbor's well-being offer your time your skills and empathy to help your neighbor with tax mentoring or community initiative we talked about time and care the previous episode but i just wanted to put it here again because as i always say everything is not about money so you can also go beyond that number five engage in the act of kindness i'm just going astral of money right now perform random acts of kind of the brightens your neighbor's day this can include buying them a small gift treating them to a meal or help with a tax that they find challenging you'll see a lot of people just need a, a time out taking them out just a little thing not from the big sometimes all these things that are not that costly you go and buy meat pie let's go for ice cream let's go for popcorn and stuff like that just making the person feel good has a way of showing that you love and you care praise the lord now remember the essence of loving your neighbor genuinely lies in showing empathy compassion and understanding why money can provide tangible assistance it is equally important to offer emotional support build relationship and contribute to the overall well-being of your community and no matter, matter what i'm saying i don't want us to lose focus don't forget the the, the the reason why you're doing what you're doing in a nutshell all is about showing that you love showing that you're demonstrating god's kind of love obeying his commandment that's why we say it again and again it is a foundational error for you to love money more than you love god because when you love god he will make your way prosperous when you love god he will give you the power that you need to create wealth and when you create that wealth you will know that it is not of your own strength you will know that it came from above and that gives you a mindset of stewardship you will know that God has blessed you to bless others. When your hand is tight like this, God cannot give you more because God blesses those that you know that they can enrich other people. So when you understand this art of loving your neighbor with money, you're doing yourself good. Remember what the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. That means when you give out to your neighbor, if it's money you want, give money that little you have you mustn't have millions the little you have maybe you're in a bus and you meet someone that doesn't have a ticket maybe the, the transportation is 100 naira. you have 1000 you just pay for the next person they not, must, ask, must not ask you you pay you've sold a seed you pay uh, 200 don't have paid for you and that is love you have shown someone kindness that they praise the lord so you mustn't have millions i pray that god will open the eyes of understanding in the mighty name of jesus all right winding up i want to tell us some biblical examples of loving your neighbor with money there are people in the bible that actually exhibit this art and i want us to learn from them and our number one hero in the bible for loving your neighbor is standing out in all our episode is the good samaritan the story of the good samaritan luke 10 25 to 37 later you read to it this parable a man that was robbed and left half naked half dead on the road the samaritan considered an outsider comes across him and takes care of his immediate needs he provides money for his lodging and promises to cover any additional expenses the good samaritan demonstrates love for his neighbor by offering financial assistance we know about that story i've said it so many times in our loving yourself episode this good samaritan met this dying man by the wayside the priest and all the highly placed left him 
going to die. He took care of this man. He gave him first aid. But he didn't stop there. He also went to the financial aspect. He also went to loving his neighbor with money. He took him to an ill. He lodged him there. He told the people anything he needs as long as money is consigned. Give it to him. He did not just say, ah. I have helped you at least you did not die call your people anything that happens to you that's your own he made sure that this man was 100 percent okay he kept money for him this is an example of loving your neighbor with money he showed kindness he showed care he also went with financial assistance i pray god will give us more understanding in the mighty name of jesus another biblical example is the widow's offering i don't know if you of you remember that the widow when jesus was in the temple he was looking at all those that were dropping offering offering you see that in mark 12 41 to 44 and there was a widow that was her last coin and she dropped it there i don't really know what made that woman to do that in that day but jesus said this woman has given more than every other person she had the love she had this as it was so sacrificial she let go of herself so let me just put it because she knew she knows very well she knew that giving gives you more that the bible say give and it shall be given to you she knows that even as she dropped that last one as she's leaving god can use anybody to give back to her so you see jesus observes a poor widow who puts two small coins into the temple treasury although her contribution is very very minute compared to the rich people's gift jesus praises her because she had given everything she had this example highlights the importance of sacrificial giving and caring for others with our financial resources regardless of the amount jesus said she has given to give everything she had bringing us to the essence why are you giving the rich people gave yes but maybe the people they were even giving to show up her giving was coming from her heart she, she she knew where it was coming she knew she was doing this just to obey god so i said earlier the foundation matters so it's not as i finish and I say ah we went for loving yourself episode and the woman of god said we should be giving 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 you back and no know the reason why you are giving everything and god will bless you in jesus name now another example is the early church acts 2 44 to 49 after the day of Pentecost, the early christians formed a close-knit community the bible said they shared all their possessions and their resources they sold everything all their belongings to help those in need they they they, they had this communal sharing of resources that was exemplified by their love for one another and their willingness to provide for those facing financial difficulties the early church they sold everything to make sure that the Bible said they all had everything together in one accord. Those that have um, good possessions, we are selling their possessions to make sure there was meat in the house of God. So you see, these early churches just did this. They did this in commandment to obey what God said. They made sure that those around them need nothing. So I pray that even as you're listening to this, you begin to check within you. What I may not have much, I may not have millions, but what is the thing I have? You want to be a millionaire tomorrow, you want to be a billionaire tomorrow. What what grace of God do you need? Start small, start small. Don't wonder if, if you if you understand the, the, the um the essence of titan, you you will never be poor because titan is one cent. God gave you hundred naira. Just he just want that your one cent. He just wants ten naira from you. So I, I, I when I was going on, my dad always tells us that see this titan. If you cannot tight when you have hundred naira, we have one thousand naira. When you will get that million, you will not give that because by that time the money will look so big. Let's do this mathematics together. A tight of one thousand naira is hundred naira. It's so small. Come on, I just give hundred naira. I have nine hundred naira to myself. It gets big, getting bigger. A tight of fifty thousand. 5,000 face is what? 500 naira. Okay, okay. It's small. A tight of what? 50,000. It's what? 5,000 naira. So, both say, oh, ma, ha. That 5,000 naira could buy provision. No, I've not paid my house rent. I've not paid this. A tight of what? 500,000. It's what? 50,000. As the ink, as your resources are increasing, it looks as if it's getting big, but it is still that one ten. A tight of 1 million. If God blesses you 1 million, what's the tight there? It's what? 100,000. Someone will say, ha, 100,000. How will I carry 100,000? Go and give to this church. Tell me about the story of someone in one church one day. God bless him. This man was praying, asking God for money asking god for money and it was in a big corner like that you not they didn't have 
when God blessed him and opened doors for him, I think he was working in one oil, oil company, they left him, they called him back. Now it was time for him to come for Thanksgiving. They paid him huge amount of money. This man could not pay the tithe. He just went and bought shares. Now these church people now share the needle. He just carried share and brought the share for the Thanksgiving. And you know what happened? You know, money, money is something that it can just slip away from your finger. All right, we say, don't, some may trust in horses, but we trust in the name of our God. And this man, after a long while, he came back to square one. Only God knows what he did in the money. Now, why do you give tithe? I'm talking about tithe to them. They're debating because it's all about money. When you give tithe, you're telling God, I trust in you. I know that you're ready. I know you're, you, you, you're the one that can perfect this money. I know that it may look little, but you can increase it. You can double it. When you give tithe, you're just putting God first in your financial transaction. You're calling him into the equation. So God knows that that money will not be enough for you. So if you're telling him, Lord, I'm giving you this for you to multiply. Just as Jesus lifted up the five loaves of bread and said, Father, I give you thanks. And you knew what happened. It was five loaves. It was still fishes, but it was able to feed the 5,000. It looks so small. So whatever you have in money, it may look small, but when you give God his place, you and you, you do what is necessary, what is needful, you do it in obedience to what God is telling you, obedience to the commandment of God. You're like Jesus lifting up the five loaves of bread and the two fishes. It can never be enough. It will never be enough. But Jesus put in his faith there saying, Lord, Father, I lift this up to you. Bless it. And the Bible says he fed the 5,000 and there were remnants. They are still remaining. So the issue of tithing that they talked to me, you're just saying, God, take this money. It can never be enough for me. Things are increasing. Fuel, everything is increasing. But I'm entrusting this to you because I know that you will multiply. So anybody that cannot give tithe, I tell you, you cannot, you cannot love your neighbor with money. If you can't give God, you cannot put God first when money matter is involved. Everything I'm talking about, loving your neighbor with money will just be bad wish. So what am I trying to say? You must understand foundations, first place in your life. When finances come, God is the first. Respect him first. He is the one that gives you the power to make wealth. After you've given him his own portion, then you cannot begin to leash it out. He will begin to give you the wisdom. That's why you see someone, someone has a lot of money, but the person cannot see what the person has done with the money. But you see another man that doesn't really have much, but he's building estate. He's doing this. He's doing a lot of things because he has handed his money over to God. And God is giving the wisdom. No, no, don't put this money in this investment. It's not going to heal. It looks so good now. It looks so green. But in 10 years to come, you're going to have collapses. Don't do this. Don't do that. God begins to speak to your inner man. I pray that as you listen today, God will open your inner man and help you to know how to deal with money matters in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That was for somebody. So back to loving your neighbor with money. As I said, it's a commandment from God. And we saw what this woman did. She had just, just two coins and she dropped it at the altar. That was led to all this. And Jesus said, this woman has given all. You know, people gave. Yes, they gave, but they had what to run back to. Jesus said, she has given her best. She has given her all. Of course, you know, that woman will not be on the same point. Glory to God. So loving your neighbor entails a lot. She gave this act of a a mind of obeying the commandments of God. Glory to God. So we now see another one. The commandments of love to your neighbor. Mark 2, 22, verse 36 to 40. We're talking about biblical examples of loving your neighbor with money. And we've spoken about the good Samaritan, spoken about the widow's offering, we've spoken about the early churches that sold everything to make sure there is no need in the church. Now we're talking about the commandment to love your neighbor. Why not a specific example? Jesus summarized the entire law by saying, love your neighbor as yourself. This commandment encompasses how we treat others, including using our resources and uh, to support and care for them. So the above are all examples of, of, of how we can love our neighbor, the importance of using our financial resources to demonstrate love and care for our neighbor and those in need. They, this, 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 when you do all this, you're encouraging them to forge ahead in life. You see, when God puts some things in your way and you come out victorious, that's a testimony because there is some God, has, God is trying to tell you that I've done this good to you because I know 
I know and I want you to be a testimony to others that are going through the same situation. If you've been in a mess before and you came out strong, God wants to use that your mess as a message to someone who is in that same mess right now. If you had more times when you didn't have enough and you survived, now that you have, God wants to use you as a testimony to the other person. You can give the person and say, take, I know that you are rising. I know that your beginning may be small, but your latter end will surely be great. You can give that person and speak. Whenever you give money to someone, it may look small, 100 naira, 500 naira, 1,000, no matter how it is, always speak into that money because it is like a seed and it will germinate. Tell that person, take this, I believe. Remember Jesus Christ, when he saw the five loaves and the two fish, he didn't just say, oh, your disciples, come. Start to share, 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 let them eat. No, he knew it was not enough. He knew that you, 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 you cannot be the one that will solve the whole world's problem. You cannot, if people will always come, problems are always there. But even when Jesus was there, Jesus, in the midst of the storm, there were storms. Jesus was sleeping because he knew that this word, we had another finish, as we had another finish, miracle, another tired Jesus to do. He knew that there was nothing. He just had to sleep and have a good time. You have to learn how to also sleep. So when you give that neighbor you are not going to solve all that your neighbor's problem but that little that you have speaking to it i said i know that with this little i'm giving to you it may not be enough but i know that god is going to multiply it god is going to use it as a channel for more to come you speak life into that person the person takes that money and the person is energized the person is is the spirit is spirit man is, is ginger if i use that word and the person goes and begin to say okay this money just like um the oil, the, the empty vessels, the, the, uh, Elijah told the woman, okay, get more vessels, get more vessels, let's put the oil. And as long as she was putting the oil, the oil kept on multiplying. So this woman now takes this money, oh man, whatever you've given, and begin to look for empty vessels. Okay, what can I do? Can I open a business? Can I open something? So when you give money, don't just give. Ask the person, okay, what are we going to do? Let's see how we can make this to multiply. I pray God gives you wisdom today in the mighty name of Jesus. May God open the eyes of our understanding. All this goes to us being sensitive to people around us. As I said, foundation for loving your neighbor with money. Number one, you must know that it's a commandment from God and you're obeying that commandment. Number two, you must have compassion. If you don't have compassion, you cannot, you can't feel the way the next person is feeling. Anything you do will not work. It will, even if you give, said, you'll be like, I bet this person said, are you trying to mock me? I don't know if that happened to you before. You give someone something out of a good mind. Person like, hmm, are you trying to mock me? Look at you. So you must have compassion, genuine compassion. You must have empathy. Putting yourself in the next person's shoe, then you must have the life of a steward. I said this earlier. These are the four major foundations for you to love your neighbor with money. So be intentional. Don't just, uh, because no, be intentional. Do it as unto the lord and god bless you in the mighty name of jesus amen now let's come back home if you hear you listening to me i could see a lot of people viewing i want to say i appreciate you but for those who review after and you'll be just hearing this my say this my talk about money 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 as i said we're talking about loving yourself loving god loving your neighbor and we're saying this time we are on loving your neighbor if you go to our previous episode you will see a lot there to you will learn from i know i know and god will bless you but if you're listening and you're just hearing money 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 let me tell you you can not love your neighbor whether by money whether by kindness whether by compassion if you have not met with the lover of your soul everything i'm saying will just be rubbish everything i'm saying will just be rubbish it will just be like like sound in your ear if you have not recognized and accepted the lover of your soul into your life remember the bible says it is the lord that gives you power power to create wealth. So if you've not accepted him, if you've not gone, gone to the manufacturer, if you've not gone to him, if you've not accepted him into your life, you cannot even understand what I'm saying. You cannot do it. People will always misunderstand your motives or you'll be, you'll just be there and you'll, you'll give on giving and you say, nothing is coming back to me. There is a process. So I want to pray for you. If you want to come to God, if you want to make him the lover of your soul, if you want to accept him into your life, if you want to say, Lord, ah, I have really, really messed up. I have been looking for this money in different places. Are you a girl listening to me as I earlier said, that money has really dealt so bad with you. Maybe you're in university and you promise 
promise yourself you're going to serve God, you're going to do all good, and your lecturer kept on plagiarizing you. If you don't pay this money, you're going to have F9. You're not going to pass this course. You're going to have a carryover. If you don't sleep with me, I'm going to do this. Come on, girl. Come on, boy. Oh, you're a boy right here, and you see friends in the school keep on telling you, we want you to belong. Come on, come on. If you come to our club, you come to our gang, we're going to give you a car. We're not going to, we're going to rate you high. We're going to make you untouchable. All those bullshit. If you've been in that mess, and you are listening to me right now, and you want to say, Lord, I know I have messed up, but I have come to the realization that you are the only one that can give me true wealth. And the reason why you are blessing me with money is because you want to entrust into my hand the labor of stewardship. If you want me to be able to lend to my generation. If I would say, you shall be a lender to your generation, you will not be a borrower. You want me to be able to pass to the next person. If you're listening to me right now and you know that it is not of you to go and beg, it is not of you to be subjected to low self-esteem, low self-esteem rather, by whatsoever that man is. Ah, let me tell you, you may not have a partial phone right now you may not have whatsoever the best labor of, of our, our best phone may be right now. You may not have it now. But let me tell you, times are changing. I went on Facebook today and I saw someone that posted a very then in those days the, the, the building was one of the high class buildings and he posted i don't know if you know this um beetle beetle car it looks so hard and people were like if you are seen in this kind of building in this 20, uh, 21st century and you're in this kind of car they will tell you that we we'll have to take you to the quarry time we have to go and keep you somewhere for them to even check if you are okay you will be looked as a mad person but once upon a time those that had these cars and had those kind of beauty the building was like a touch building but it had a see um sink a bit ceiling on it it was but it was touch like so but once upon a time those were the kind of buildings that kings and princes come in if you watch all these old old movies you will see them coming out like that the king and the priest and it was rated so high but now times have evolved things are becoming so current and everything is changing if you're found in this kind of building you will say ah I'm rich. So what am I trying to tell you? If you've been a person now, you don't have plush phone. You don't have the latest things. Times and seasons are in the hands of God. Don't allow anyone to fool you. What you see that is good now, technology keeps on changing every day. When God is ready for you, he will give you the best. God has not given you now because he's saving yours for the future. Yours is going to be greater. Yours is going to be much, much better. So if you're hearing my voice and you've messed up, you know big time you have messed up and you want to come to the lover of your soul you want to come and say lord i know i'm dirty i know i have messed up i know i have fallen big time to all the the, the, the rubbish of the enemy i know oh god that this morning has really flogged me but i have heard your words today and i come to you because you are the giver of wealth you are the one that has the hands of the kings in your hands if you don't ask someone to bless me no one can if you are here and you want to make him the lover of your soul you want to accept him into your life i just want to pray for you i just want to pray for you so what do you want, want you to do now just put your hands on your chest and you repeat this prayer after me don't forget he's the one that lifts the 99 just for you and this message of love is just for you today so wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice if you realize like the prodigal son you've spent all you've you've, you've messed up and you want to come to the lover of your soul just put your hands in your chest as i sing the song this line of this song i just want you to begin to think about the love of a father daddy where the pamper daddy where the bless forever you're my father now you they give me rest i'll sing about your mercy I'll sing about your grace. Now you the bust my brain every night and day. Daddy, where the pamper? Daddy, where the bless? Forever you're my father. Now you they give me ways. When I look around, I see your faithfulness. 
I'll get on my knees Cause now you will be the best Say even when I fall your hand You never break my heart Love of my soul You know they break my heart I'll sing about your mercy I'll sing about your grace Now you they bust my brain Every night and day Come sing with me Daddy where the pampa Now you alone the bless Forever you're my father Now you they give me rest Sing about your mercy I'll sing about your grace now you the boss my brain daddy every night and day if you put your hands in your chair just say lord i surrender all to you you're my father and i know you will not chase me away i have come back to where i belong i ask lord you forgive me from all my sins father lord cleanse me from all unrighteousness I accept you, Jesus, into my life as my Lord and personal Savior. I say bye-bye to sin. I say bye-bye to every molestation. I say bye-bye to every, everything of the enemy. And I run unto you right now. Remove my name from the book of death. Put my name in the book of life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, behold your people. All those who have said this prayer and those who will say it act now, they have come under your shadow. You are the Father that pampers. You are the one that leaves the 99 chase of one. I ask, Lord, that you forgive them from all their sins, cleanse them from all unrighteousness, remove their name from the book of death, and put their name in the book of life. Father, I pray that you will preserve them. Father, keep them strong in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to say a big congratulations to you because you are the one that God has shown mercy. You are the reason for this episode 24 today. I want you to know that there is joy in heaven on your behalf right now. A big banquet is going on. So wherever you are, you are a baby that is just being born. So the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assemblies of yourself together as the manner of some is. So you need to, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the world that you will go thereby. So you need to find a Bible-believing church and attend so that you can grow in your faith. Wherever you are, I'm in Port Harcourt. I represent Chama Christian Ministries here in Port Harcourt, the growing church. If you want to come, feel free. You can DM. Um, if you don't want, there are good churches all around you. Just look for one and go. And as long as the Lord's name is being glorified, it is all right with me. So I want to say congratulations once more in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, all right, that's good. And for all those watching today, I want us to say a little prayer for ourselves. I wrote down some prayer points. Excuse me. I wrote down some prayer points. I want us to say that as I go through the conclusion. So loving your neighbor with money involves using your financial resources to show care and support those around you. It means being generous and sacrificial in your giving. I'm concluding, considering the needs of others above your own. Example from the Bible, such as the Good Samaritan and the widows um, often, this demonstrate the concept in action. The early Christians communicated in Acts 2, community in Acts 2 also exemplified love for their neighbors by sharing their possessions and providing for those in need. Ultimately, loving your neighbor with money is about using your finances or your financial means to make a positive difference in the life 
of those around you i actually kept this so that i can read it now so wherever you are i want us to pray together because we really need love so we really need god to be able to practice this so we are going to be taking three prayer points right now i want to mention it you can pray it later on your own we're going to be praying a prayer for generosity a prayer for generosity the second prayer will be prayer for designment you have to know there are some people you give your money to it's not going to be our portion and they'll use it for evil with evil acts but when you have the spirit of designment god will tell you no don't do this don't give this person now then you're also going to pray for a prayer excuse me for compassion so i'm going to leave this i've written them down i'm just going to say it and i believe you'll repeat after me and we'll be done for today glory to god so first prayer is our prayer for generosity so you repeat after me say dear lord please help me to cultivate a generous heart lord help me to see the needs of others and to give freely dear lord help me oh god to know that they need something father i have come to you today teach me to use my financial resources wisely and compassionately so that i may be a blessing to those around me in the mighty name of jesus you can go to over again and begin to pray lord i pray for oh god you use me use me oh god to be generous to someone around me may i use my financial resources to wish out to someone around me in the mighty name of jesus the next prayer is prayer of design and say oh lord grant me the wisdom and the assignment in how I can use my money to love my neighbor. Open my eyes, O oh God, that I may know, O oh God, when you're speaking to me. Help me, Lord, to identify the genuine needs and opportunities where my financial resources and assistance can make a meaningful impact. Help me, Lord, to be able to see it, Lord, that when I give to people, it will not be for mockery, but it will make meaningful impact in the mighty name of Jesus. Dear Lord, I pray that you will guide me in making wise choices and avoid enabling dependency, but rather empowering others. Use me to empower my generation. Use me, oh God, to empower someone. Give me the spirit of design. May I be able to know and look out for opportunities, Lord. Why my, yeah, my financial resources, oh God, will be needed in the mighty name of Jesus. Our next prayer is prayer for compassion. You say after me, you say, Heavenly Father, I pray that you will fill me up with a deep sense of compassion for my neighbor. Help me, Lord, to have that deep feeling of compassion for my neighbors in the mighty name of Jesus. Open my eyes, oh God, to see their struggles. Come on, make that prayer right now. May I be able to see their struggles. May I be able to put myself in their shoes and understand what they are going through. Dear Lord, soften my heart to their pains in the mighty name of Jesus. Grant me the empathy to understand their needs, Lord, and the willingness to sacrificially give of all my resources to support and uplift them. Grant me, O oh God, the heart, Lord, to be able to feel their pain and be willing, O oh God, to sacrificially meet their needs in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, someone begin to pray. I pray, O oh God, that you fill us with the spirit of generosity. Fill us, O oh God, with the spirit of, O oh God, of designment. Fill us with your compassion, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, O oh God, that we will be able, O oh God, to give, O oh God. We'll be able to give to our neighbor. We'll be able, O oh God, to give to those around us. Help us, O oh God, that we will be and see opportunities when you are telling us this is what I need you to do now help us and fill us up in the mighty name of Jesus amen father I commit your people into your hands all those who have stayed up to this time Lord oh God I pray and I ask that you fill them with your power ah you say you're the one that give it power to make word and that those listening to me are they going to one issue or the other I ask for filling Lord father I pray oh God that you provide oh God more than their daily bread Lord father oh God those who are eating from, from mouth to hand to mouth 
mouth. I pray that you will lift them from that level. You said, oh God, we shall give, we shall be lenders to our nations, Lord, we will not be borrowers. So I pray and I release grace, oh God, to lend to nations upon them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because we know that you have taught us enough today. We thank you for your wealth of wisdom. Thank you, oh God, for the grace, oh God, to be able to love ourselves, to love God first, love ourselves and to love our neighbor. Father, we thank you for the provisions. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for being a good, good father. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Wow. Loving yourself, loving yourself, loving yourself. I want to congratulate everyone who has stayed up to this time. Thank you very much for staying up to this time. I love you so well. Thank you very much. Please do us a favor. If you've been blessed, you can share this post to your friends, to your neighbors. It's also a way of encouraging someone. Like and comment. Tell us what you like about this video, about this loving yourself. Tell us where you want us to improve and we are ready to take all your corrections. Once again, I want to say it is a foundational error for you to love your neighbor and hate yourself. So whatsoever you do, you love God, you love yourself, and you love your neighbor. No matter the weather, and can last you forever. God bless you. I celebrate you. Loving it. Signing out.